Hey Vault Dwellers, JV here and today I'm sharing my beta feedback for Fallout 76. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell for more Fallout 76 videos just like this. Just a friendly reminder, the final Fallout 76 beta before launch is happening today from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Time in the U.S. If you're going to miss part of it or just want to come hang out, I will be streaming with some other creators over on fb.gg slash jv2017gameplay right when it goes live. Link is in the description below. Before we dive in, I want to make absolutely clear that from my 25 hours of experience across several betas, I've really fallen in love with this game. I feel like this is something I can play daily for a long time and genuinely enjoy. I found that 76 really opens up after level 10 when you get beyond the forest and actually start going and exploring the variety of regions. There's really so much to see and I feel like I've barely scratched the surface. That being said, it would be a disservice to this game if I truly enjoy it and I'm passionate about it not to share a few ways I think it could improve. I want this to be an even better game, so here's what I think should change. First is better inventory management. I'm not even talking about stash size or weight, just the tools we have to sort items needs to improve, particularly in the aid category. Since we have hunger and thirst to worry about with all those softcore survival mechanics, I'm constantly having to dig through aid to find my food and drinks. My solution would be to separate chems from food and drinks entirely. Give me a separate tab, that way I can find what I need more efficiently. It doesn't help that there are magnitudes more items in this game overall. Flowers, animal meat, three different types of water. It gets overwhelming. Same goes for junk. I think it would help everyone to separate junk and components. One tab would have your toy rockets, your aluminum cans, what have you, and the other one would just be your scraps of aluminum, your scraps of leather, whatever it may be. I'm sure you guys have noticed, but items like bottles and baseballs don't scrap when you hit the scrap all junk button because they can be used to make explosives. So that makes sense, but it's also frustrating when you find those things just sitting in your junk tab. So how about we separate unscrapped junk from scrap junk entirely? I think both of these, the changes to aid and junk and components, would be great quality of life changes. On the same note, give us a separate tab for our cosmetic armor items, the ones that don't give us any damage resistance whatsoever and are just for looks. Those are also lumped into the armor where we're actually getting damage and energy resistance that make an impact in gameplay. I think those things should be separated as well. My next change is to the HUD. I think we need better HUD management options. This is a popular complaint and something I agree with completely and should be voiced again and again. The objectives in the top right of our screens get overwhelming very quickly. Yes, you can get rid of them. You can open the map, hover over the objective that it's you know designated for, and choose Stop Tracking. Or you can navigate your Pip-Boy to find the quest and unmark it. There are ways to manage your HUD, but this is a constant. I am always repeating these actions to declutter my screen. So I think it would make more sense to have a pop-up message when I enter an area or get a new quest, similar to the server maintenance one that we're all familiar with, or the one when someone sends you a party invite uh, to their team that asks you if you want to track a nearby quest. Ask us first instead of automatically sticking that to our screen, so we get to choose what we want to display. Also, if I'm playing in a group, I want to be able to choose which quests appear on my screen that my teammates have active. I believe right now, the team leader's quests appear no matter what with the star. That's just kind of weird to me. You know, it puts the onus on one person to manage that stuff for everyone else. I'd much rather have a separate tab in my Pip-Boy called Team that allows me to track what my teammates' quests are myself. I think Bethesda is trying to give us the tools to manage this stuff ourselves, but maybe they're not going about it the right way and they didn't have the proper feedback from their internal and smaller closed testing to get this. So I hope they're able to address these, you know, management HUD quality of life changes. My next top change would be to team experience. This one is a bit nuanced, but I've seen a similar sentiment shared across the community. Right now, if you're in a team, you get experience for killing an enemy if and only if you put damage on that enemy. Makes sense, right? You get a little bonus experience as well for getting the killing blow. The problem is with the way perks and combat works right now, 
we're able to one-shot a lot of enemies. A lot of players are running riflemen, you know, rifle, single-shot base perks. If you specialize in those perks and have a highly customized hunting rifle with a great receiver, you're doing incredible damage to most enemies. And the vast majority of the enemies that you're killing are lower tier, they give you around 10 experience, and they die in a single shot. This isn't just a lower level phenomenon either. This is something I've experienced while questing with a group of mid-level 20s. I feel like we all lose out on a bit of XP because of this, and perks like Inspirational aren't enough to offset that loss. If I want to ensure that I get experience, I'm bouncing between targets as much as possible so I can land that one shot and get the experience for the kill. And if I'm a melee character, for example, I'm essentially screwed because I have to close the gap and race my teammates to get one punch in before they shoot and kill the target very quickly. I feel like there are a few ways Bethesda could address this. They could change the way group experience works entirely to operate within a range. That's how most games do this. Everyone shares the experience as long as they're within X distance from the killed enemy. Obviously, that opens up boosting, right? I'm not sure how much of a problem that might become, but that's definitely an option. Another is to share all experience for killing enemies across the team, no matter who shoots or kills what at a small penalty. Maybe it's 85% experience, but that ensures you're never missing out on a kill entirely. Inspirational could bump that number up to 100%, for example, to offset it. Now, that may seem like the game is punishing you on that killing experience for playing with friends, but in reality, you're always more efficient if you're killing more quickly. Four guns, four, you know, badass vault dwellers are better than one. In the long run, if you finish six quests an hour with a group versus three an hour by yourself, you're gonna get more experience. That's why I think giving 85% experience, for example, would be the right way to go about that if they're going to change the way group experience works. However this issue might be solved or addressed, I think there are some problems with it in its current form. I'd like to not worry about competing with my teammates for experience. That kind of takes it, you know, something away from the experience, kind of like Borderlands, for example. In that game, I'm constantly competing with my teammates over that awesome boss gun that dropped. I like that we don't have to compete like that in Fallout 76, but there is a layer of competition with this experience thing, so I hope this is addressed in some form or fashion. Next up, camp placement is too finicky. I love the idea of camp. I think it's awesome to have your own traveling settlement that you can pick up and place down and strategically put places to fast travel to and return to to scrap all your stuff and kind of complete that gameplay loop that we're all used to in Fallout. Seriously, this feature is one of my favorite, but I can't stand how I have to reassemble my camp constantly. Every time I move my camp and navigate to the stored tab, I find my blueprint and it's in pieces. I'm not sure if this is a bug or the fact that a lot of the terrain in 76 is so steep that the floor pieces can't be placed down properly, but oftentimes my two by two floor piece, like a really small floor piece, breaks in half because of where I place my camp. I don't want to have to place it every single time. It's like disassembling and reassembling a puzzle every time I want to move my camp. Possible solutions to this could be to let us float our camps above ground using some beams or some pillars, some items like that. That way we always have a flat surface no matter where our camp is placed. Another is to extend the existing beams that connect floor pieces to the terrain down further so we don't you know, have to worry about having a floating piece. I don't have a great solution to this one. I just know that it bums me out every time I decide to move my camp. I get it, West Virginia is very mountainous and the terrain will be steep in most camp locations no matter what, it still just kind of sucks from a gameplay perspective to have to grapple with this constantly. My final change is a small one, but it's a constant. It's the Pip-Boy light. This is so simple, but it needs to be said again and again. Let us customize the Pip-Boy light. This was an early complaint after the very first beta for me, and it's still a constant thing. Just like any other Fallout game, half of your playtime is in the night, in the dark. This game is dark, and I think that's a great thing. Nights in Fallout 4 weren't that dark, that was a constant complaint from people, and it felt a little weird, and people were even installing mods to make nights more realistic. That's kind of been addressed in 76, but good god, I can't tell you how much I hate bathing this beautiful world and the, you know, environment in green light. It's disgusting. I want a white light. 
please, for the love of Todd, can we get a white light? That's it for my five big changes after my time with the game. Obviously, there's another beta today, and tomorrow I'm going to share my overall thoughts on the game after the last beta session. Once again, I'm going to be streaming that today, starting when the beta goes live at 2 p.m. Eastern. Link is in the description below. In the comment section, tell me what your top five big changes are. Share your thoughts below. If you enjoyed the video, remember to subscribe and hit the bell for more Fallout 76 content, like my last video where we discussed the stash size being increased. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.